Okay, we're ready. So hi, everyone. It's Anna Gibbs back again with another uh, part of our series, Surviving and Thriving. And I'm the general manager of three Keller Williams offices in the Hudson Valley. And I have a real passion for entrepreneurs and their spirit to really persevere and grow businesses, especially when it can really create a legacy and opportunity for other people. And so I'm really excited today because I have my friend and business partner, Rosemary Pilati, who is the owner of those three market centers. And hi, Rosemary. Hello, Anna. Hi. So, you know, it's interesting because Rosemary and I talk all the time, every day, and uh, we decided it would be I think really valuable to put some of our thoughts and conversations in this format and give me an opportunity to interview her. So I really thank you for doing this, Ro, and appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. So let's start, maybe um, tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your background. You've been in real estate for how long now? 31 years. 31. And, uh, yeah. I got into real estate uh, wanting to invest in real estate. I was in a totally different industry uh, doing sales. Uh, and I figured the best way is to really learn about it. And how do you learn about it if you're, if you're a licensed realtor? So uh, I got my license, I was doing it part-time, um, got an affinity, I uh, had an opportunity to, to sit some new construction. Uh, really loved that. I come, my family has a background in construction. Uh, so I did that, I eventually phased myself fully out of my other business and into real estate sales, um, started my own brokerage, uh, an independent brokerage. Um, over the years, uh, was advised that I probably had learned so much from sitting on new construction sites and really being involved in the construction um, and taking some courses at NYU that I could probably actually build homes myself. Um, so I, I did that. I became a, a general contractor. Uh, from that also became a land developer uh, and, and kept my small independent real estate brokerage uh, until about 2005. And I was feeling like the market was pretty wonky right then. And um, I came across Keller Williams, uh, who had a totally different business model than I had ever seen in real estate. And uh, at the core of me is always being a real estate agent. And when I saw their model, um, I just said, there is no better model out there for an agent. And it was not in our area. And I turned um, to, to my business partner at Kilo Williams Hudson Valley, Karen Zaccone. I said to her, if we don't do this now, um, somebody else is going to do it and it's going to be really big. And so we started um, our first Keller Williams in, in 2006. Uh, we got a great core group of partners in with us there. Uh, in 2010, I had the opportunity um, to meet Dulce Ferreira, uh, who had an independent brokerage. And from that, we started um, Keller Williams Hudson Valley United, um, servicing Orange and Sullivan counties. And uh, then with you uh, over the past seven years. Um, Almost eight. <laughs> we have, yeah, we have been able to, to grow it and, and went out and started now um, our Keller Williams Hudson Valley North. Um, you know, and through the years, I, I, as I said, I've done a lot of building, developing, investing, uh, so a lot of entrepreneurial uh, stuff in real estate. Yeah, that's an amazing story. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you have a lot to share about business in general and your experiences. Um, you know, business is, is, is probably challenging for most people on any given day. And in the last several months we've been faced with a lot of challenge and adversity how has um what what has your experience been as a leader we have almost what we have about 450 agents between the three market centers and we have staff so you know what is what is your experience in general been trying to lead through challenging times yeah well you know it, it's first off that you have to show up uh you know it when when times get tough um, you know, Gary Keller, I heard him say it and I heard Simon Sinek say it, you know, crisis reveals all. And, you know, if you have a strength, it's going to show up during that time. And if you have a weakness, it, it's going to show up. Everything will just be magnified. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our people get fearful and uncertain. And, you know, it's, it's up to the leaders to, to really show up and, and to do that, to lead. And, you know, that, that has been my biggest takeaway from it. And, you know, in order to do that, you know, as a leader, 
you have to be have people that that you're associated with um, that can show you the way too. And you know, during this time, you know, it's it's really been a lot of finding people who can pour into me, so I can in turn pour into my people. Yeah. So who are you following right now? When you say that you know people are pouring into you, are you reading different things, listening to podcasts? Who are some people that have influenced and supported your leadership journey? Yeah, well, definitely John Maxwell. Uh, you know, from the beginning, uh, John had a serious, you know, crisis through leadership. Um, Gary Keller is an amazing person to be in business with um, as a leader. Uh, he has really, you know, paved a great path for us. Um, I'm fortunate I have great coaches like Terry Foster Nolan through MAPS, um, Rich Levin, an outside coach. Um, I, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts from Simon Sinek. Um, just, you know, it's a plethora. Kevin Hall, uh, I have the honor of being in his uh, Genshai Global Greats now with you. And um, he, he's been a phenomenal resource um, for, for pouring in. Yeah. So in your opinion or um, in experience, what, what really makes up a good leader? I'm, I'm, I'm going a little off script. I gave Rosemary some questions, but you know, you never know how this conversation goes. <laughs> what, <laughs> she knows me by now. So, so what, what do you think, you know, when you, when you hear the term leader and leadership, what, what really, in your opinion, has to be a part of that? I think for, for times like now, you have to be resilient. I, I think that that is the, the, time, the time you have to have faith you know, first off, um, you, you have to have faith in your own vision. Um, you have to have faith in your ability to move forward every day. Um, and you have to be resilient. You know, you have to be able to, to take the hits and, and to keep your mindset right. You know, mindset is, is the number one thing, um, you know, that I think is a challenge for most people during times like this. Um, so you, you, to be a great leader, you have to have a great mindset. Yeah. And I think what you said about, you mentioned vision, you have to have a vision. I mean, you have to have, you know, you have to know where you're going and, and where you're leading anyone, right? And, and the mm -hmm. company in general. So when you sit and create vision, what comes into, into mind for you when you're thinking about where the company is going, um, what's important for you to have in that vision? Uh, I, th I think it, it's the people um, and, and the needs of the people, uh, you know, that that's always first in, in the vision, you know, where, where can we help our people get to, where can we help our people think bigger, um, that, that's, that's always first and foremost in, in the, the thinking of vision, uh, formation of vision. Yeah, so, all right, so it's been challenging, we know that, it's, it's been um, definitely some things have come up in front of us that we couldn't have planned for. We were joking around this morning about 2020 maybe being the year we want to forget, but there's also really some positive things that have come from this too. So in, in your experience as a leader, what are some positive things that have come out of this for you in business and maybe even personally from this COVID-19 and other challenges that have shown up recently? Well, personally, I've cooked more than ah! I have in the last 30 years. So my family's pretty happy about that. <laughs> me too. I, I, it's crazy to think that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And, um, and, and I, think, I think overall, you know, there, it's that, it is that whole growth, you know, the, the growth, my personal growth and mindset, um, you know, has expanded so much through this time. And, and I think we've also helped our team and, and the people that we work with expand their mindset and their growth. Uh, and I think many of them will tell you that, that this, this time ha has just been a really expansive period for a lot of people. Um, so I, I think that, that that's it. And, you know, there's a, I, I learned how to make hand sanitizer and wipes and... <laughs> Always resilient. Do you think you've had more time to think and plan during this, these last several months? Are you more um, reflective? I, I don't think I've had more time to think and plan for long term okay. that much. Um, we have, we have changed a lot of things that we're doing in our business. Mm -hmm. We found that we've had to be very fluid. Um, most of them are, are more short term or, or things that we can do in the next three to six months. Um, and it's just because there's been so much time and energy taken on, on the today. 
yeah. uh, you know, much, much more so than, than normal. Yeah. Um, and we really don't, you know, we have less, less sight uh, of what it's going to, to look like um, in, in three or six months. Yeah. What would your um, best advice be right now to anyone watching or listening to us that is in business, whether they're in real estate or not, um, that you could say about leadership and leading through adversity specifically? Um, well, I will tell you that um, I think that every day, the most important thing is to focus on the outcome of what you want that day and just keep moving towards it. Okay, because it, it's a chunk down time right now. You know, yeah. we have to take take the little steps um, as as opposed to maybe the leaps that we take when times are different. Um, and it is the person. You know, I heard Gary Keller say this. It is the person who has the foresight who has the advantage. Uh -huh. So you know, we do have to try to think out and 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 see. You know, think about what are the opportunities that are that are going to come out of this. Um, you know, and you, it really is staying focused um, because when people allow the uncertainty of what's going on and where things may be going um, and, and let that creep into becoming a fear inside of them, that's really a death knell to business because that's what paralyzes businesses. Um, and, you know, lastly, I'll just say, you know, failure isn't fatal and success isn't final. Love so, that. Um, you know, you have to just keep being resilient through, through these times. So what does success mean to you? How would you define that for you? Um, for, for me right now, and, and I think success looks different to you at different points in your life. Um, it's, it's at the end of the day, um, if I feel that I have impacted someone's life in a positive way, um, that maybe they wouldn't have had if they hadn't been been with me, then I feel like my day is successful. And, uh, you know, that's really, really what it, it's about right now. It's, it's about people. Mm -hmm. And I think right now is, is a, when you, you think about what are opportunities for, for business right now, it really is finding and aligning with great people. You know, people are in times of change, job changes, life changes. Uh, and I think there's a lot of talent and a lot of opportunity right now to find that talent and align with it. Yeah. I mean, we're looking for talent. We're looking to expand with uh, leadership. So, you know, yes. that, there's that anybody is out there who, yeah. who is, is, is looking for an opportunity. We're looking for you. <laughs> yes. Quick commercial break. We are looking for talent. <laughs> so, um, Ro, what, um, what, in your opinion, would be a, a business owner's greatest opportunity today with what's going on in our country and the economy? What, what would you say to really inspire someone to take action? I think it comes back to the talent piece. Mm. It, it, really, it really is go out there and find great people because, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, Gary Keller says if there's something missing in your business, it usually always comes back to you're missing that one relationship. So, you know, if you want to build your business more successfully, you, you just have to have more, more people there to work with you on the team to help you get there. Yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of opportunity with that right now. Yeah. So I, I've come to know you well over the years. There are two words that you use a lot that I know are very important to you. And I would love for you to talk about why it's significant. I, I know she's like, you didn't ask me this question. What words? What are the well, words? I use a lot of words. Two opportunity opportunity and people and you know i know that you have a deep love for our agents our people and our organization and always looking to grow with as you say the right people and the talent that's out there and i know it's because you love to give opportunity why is that so important to you you know i think that what opportunity speaks to me because opportunity is growth Mm. And if you're not growing, you're dying. So uh, I think that all people's success also comes through growth and, um, and the, the, the fulfillment that, that that gives you. So um, that's, that's what opportunity means to me, is really helping someone to find that path that will grow them, will grow their life bigger, will grow their family bigger, will grow their relationships bigger, um, so that's what opportunity is for me. Yeah. Have you always been a growth-minded person? 
Yes. Yeah. So yeah. can I take you back to um, we, when you talked about your background um, and starting your business? Um, do you want to talk anything about women in business? And is it, do you find it to be challenging? Is it, is it an opportunity? How did, you know, I'm sure it changes depending on who's in front of you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so I've always been the type to, to never consider myself less than anyone else, um, to never consider myself a minority. Um, I've always gone into it with the mindset that I should be treated equally. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I had enough self-confidence about myself to, to do that. And, and I'm not gonna say it's always been easy, um, but I think the minute that we fall victim um, to, to allowing ourselves that space to, to be less than we really are, um, that, that creates a, 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 a troublesome time for us, okay? And it allows us to fall into that victim mode. Um, you know, a, as a woman in the building business, um, uh, that is a business that is 95% white male. And, you know, I would say, you know, there were a handful of times that I had confrontation, but again, it, I just went into it, you know, thinking that I'm not going to be different. And I will tell you, I've also made a concerted effort to not segregate myself. Okay, I am, I am a person who refused to join the women council of realtors, the, the women in building council of the National Association of Home Builders. No, I'm in the National Association of Home Builders. Why should I segregate myself? Now okay. listen, some, pe some people agree with that, some people don't. For me, it's, it's served me well. Right. Um, to, to just be part of the, the bigger group and, and to not say, I'm special because I'm a, I'm a woman and I have that minority status. Um, I just, I, that's just my mindset. So, yeah. So yeah, no, I, I can understand that, you know, as a, as another woman in business, um, it, it's interesting when your thoughts are met with a challenge from the environment, right? Cause we come into things saying, well, we're just as capable and smart and, and looking for opportunity and resources as anyone else. And uh, until someone tries to tell you that it should be different. And uh, so I, I respect that. Um, you mentioned mindset. So let's talk about that for a sec. And how do you maintain your positive mindset? It's something we talk a lot about. So what are some things that uh, you do to keep that open, growth-minded mindset? Well, I think you have to start each day with gratitude. Um, you know, I, I do meditate, you know, I have, I, I meditate, I have gratitude in the morning. Um, I also, again, listen, will make sure that I, I have time during my day to, to listen to people who are, are putting out positive mindset podcasts or video. Um, and, and it is, you know, you have to, you have to work on that because sometimes, you know, the grind and, and, and the negativity that, are, that is in other people, you know, will, will start to pull you down. But, but, you know, Diana Kokoska, um, who we know from Keller Williams, you know, she was really the one that, that grounded me in, in gratitude and, and making sure that that's always a part of it. Um, because that definitely keeps your, your mind in the right place. Yeah, it's hard to be in a scarcity mindset when you are expressing gratitude, right? So yeah. that well, abundant physical, mindset. Physiologically, you can't feel fear, right? right? And gratitude at the same time. Right. So if you put your mind in a state of gratitude, the fear goes away. That's right. Exactly. Um, and listen, it's not that fear, fear is an emotion that we all experience. It's just that we can't stay there because it's paralyzing. And right. when you, you know, as a leader, we're responsible to lead other people. So if we get stuck, then, you know, we're, we're creating, you know, conflict for other people as well. So I think that mindset is huge. Um, so another thing that I know is really important to you and that um, I would think you would say has contributed to your success is the fact that I know you're very learning based. We've talked about podcasts and following different coaches and speakers. Um, do you read a lot? What are you reading right now? Yes. Uh, oh, <laughs> my, pro my problem is I can tell you what I'm reading because I have so many books open right now. I know, I do too. That's funny. 
Uh, I would have to look at my Kindle because yeah. I, like literally I'm reading so many different things. Yeah. Uh, do you like yeah. to read for business, for pleasure, for spiritual growth? What do, what do you like to focus on? Most, most of the time I'm, I'm learning, I, I'm, I'm choosing books for either personal or professional growth. Mm -hmm. um, actually, one of the books I'm reading right now is The Power of Moments. Um, mm. It is how to really create impactful um, situations for the people around you. Um, with, with very, you know, a small thing that will, will make a big impact. Um, so that is a, a new book I just started reading. Um, I'm just trying to think what else is on that reading list. Um, the, I re just reread The Happiness Advantage. That was know. good. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I have not heard of The Power of Moments. I wrote that one down. So how, yeah, the, how the other good book that I recently read was Infinite Games, Simon mm -hmm. Sinek, and yeah. he's done a lot. How timely so was that? I've been a lot of time on his video instead of, you know, after the book. Um, yeah. He has a lot of good videos. He just did a series with John Maxwell, which was phenomenal, and I, I, I didn't finish it yet. I have to go back and, and look at some of the videos there. How timely was reading the Infinite Game to prepare you for what this year has brought? Yeah. For someone yeah. who's never read the book, can you just paraphrase quickly? What, what do we mean by the infinite game? It, it, it's really thinking about your business as, as opposed to just getting to a goal. Mm -hmm. um, it's really about thinking about that goal as being infinite and, and how do you keep your, your business going? And it, it's really a lot of the mindset that you saw in like a Steve Jobs, um, you know, that it wasn't just about a phone. It, it was really became about a movement. Right. In, right. in a way of people doing things so um yeah and that that was very good because i think now more than ever you know the business world is, is in an infinite space you know mm -hmm. because whatever we thought we were going to accomplish or whatever direction we thought we were going to go in that was going to get us to a certain place it's become much bigger than that now yeah. you know yeah so let's talk about something that's really in your wheelhouse which is real estate and I know you don't have a crystal ball. However, what are your thoughts about where business is going, um, the way that we interact with each other, consumerism, the real estate market as a whole? What are some thoughts that you're comfortable sharing? Well, you know, it, it's really uh, so much of it is fluid and, and how the pandemic is going to continue to, to play out. Um, you know, if there is no vaccine, um, for a prolonged period of time of another year or something, um, you know, business is going to stay on a, a much more virtual platform. I mean, I think it's going to be more virtual than it ever was before. I think a lot of people made moves that they knew they had to make, um, but they, they just didn't make them because they were comfortable where they were mm -hmm. before. And this sort of pushed them, uh, you know, over, over the edge. Um, and, and I think overall the economy is, is going to depend on how many jobs actually come back. And, you know, I don't think anybody has the, the crystal ball to see that yet. And, and how the jobs return, you know, if it, if it comes back and it's 6% unemployment is going to be a lot different than if it stays up at about 10 or 11%. Right. Um, and that will impact the real estate market. And, um, but I do, I do see a trend now people are going to, there are going to, it's going to continue. I think where a lot of people are going to continue to, to telecommute and work from home. People have become much more focused on a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the small house movements, it's going to become more of a big house movement again. Mm -hmm. uh, where people want a bigger house where they can have an office, they can spread out. Um, Enjoy and, maybe the outdoors. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, we see that already. We see the number of pools going in. My landscaper told me yesterday, he can't really? get to my house. He's got so many pools to do. So, wow. um, yeah. Yeah. So I think people are, are going to be more, more into their homes and, and, and that type of thing. So I think we're going to see a bigger house footprint. Yeah. So how do you think that is going to create opportunity? So the three market centers that you own, we should tell everyone where they are. So I'll let you do that. 
Yeah, so we are we are across uh, the Hudson Valley um, on the west side of the Hudson River from Rockland County on the New Jersey border um, up through Orange and Sullivan County and into Ulster, Columbia and Green. So we're all the way um, up the Hudson River on the west side. And, uh, you know, our real estate market right now is booming uh, mm -hmm. and because it, it it's a suburb community of New York City. And so now a lot of people are wanting to get out of the city. Um, they've been closed in those apartments for three months. Mm -hmm. And so they want to get out to, to the country. And so our market is booming. Yeah. So I think we're going to see a lot of opportunity um, for our agents. And so if you had a, a realtor from our area in front of you right now looking for some business guidance or advice, what would you tell them to focus on right now? I would absolutely focus on listings and, and, and finding listings uh, because, you know, the inventory is so short right now uh, that those who have the listings, you know, list to last in this business. It's never changed in 30 years that I've been in the business um, and I don't expect it to. And so, you know, and, and I think you just have to be really great now with technology. Um, mm -hmm. You need to be learning and growing in the technology space. And, and how you're connecting with people on social media. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I so I call this video series Surviving and Thriving because I think that that is, is the mindset when you are a small business owner, right? So first you learn how to survive and then you need to create intention around thriving. And um, I know certainly some businesses have had to pivot and make changes because of um, what we saw as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were no different. And it's, it's really about having that resilient, gritty approach to wanting to continue to thrive. And so I know there are probably some people listening to this who, in our company or not, who may be a little overwhelmed right now. Um, I've been using this term like everyone's skin's a little thin. Um, and maybe, um, you know, is, is trying to figure out how to navigate all this. So what advice do you have for them as far as, you know, just surviving and thriving in their business or, or just being able to meet the challenges um, that life will always throw us? What, what advice do you have for someone who may be having a hard time with that? Yeah, well, again, you have to have grit and resiliency. You know, you have to be able to get knocked down and get back up. Um, you know, and like I said, you know, failure isn't fatal and success isn't final. So uh, some of our, our biggest successes come out of, out of our biggest failures. Um, and I think that, you know, it's in, in the survival mode, like I said, every day you have to just get up and just move towards and do the activities that you know you need to do to, to get business. So mm -hmm. if you're in the real estate business, you have to just get up and somehow lead generate every day. And there's a million different ways to do it, uh, but you have to do it, okay? Because that's going to bring you business, whether it's gonna be today or tomorrow. Um, so that really that really doesn't, doesn't change. And you have to keep your eyes open for opportunities. And you have to start thinking out of the box as to, what those opportunities, you know, may be. Um, you know, we were talking in, in our market centers, you know, we have very large training rooms. We, we just last year moved into a very big space in, in our new city office yeah. um, with a training room that holds 75 people. You know, it, it, it doesn't look like anytime soon we're gonna use that training room for training. Uh -huh. uh, so we started thinking, well, what do our agents need to do right now um, to get their business. Well, they need to create videos and podcasts, right? They need to be in the virtual space. So we are looking at converting at least a section um, of our physical space into a studio mm -hmm. where our, we can offer our agents the equipment to come in and make their videos and do their podcasts. Yeah. So, you know, it's six months ago, I would have never told you I would turn my training room into that. No. <laughs> And so it's innovative and it's meeting the needs of what we see right now. And I think that's probably, I had a conversation earlier today with someone um, who's, who's growing their business and, and they asked me why so many people don't succeed in this business or it appears to be that so many people don't succeed. 
And I think it's the same reasons why people don't succeed in business in general. If you're not prepared and you're not planning for the future, that it also includes contingencies. We, we just don't know what's coming at us in any given moment. And we have to be willing to, to pivot and, you know, change with what's happening and shift with the market or shift with the, you know, changes in business. And you have to pay attention to what's going on around you and meet those needs, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the most successful people are those who are willing to do what others won't, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that grit, you know, it, it's, it's just staying in it and, and doing it and, and thinking out of the box. Uh, you know, a lot of what we're thinking right now is, is not the way our company looked 10 years ago. It's not the way our company looked five years ago. Um, you know, we're thinking and, and, and coming up with some, some very new plans. So, so that's another positive that's come out of this. Yes. Yeah. Probably propelled us forward um, to start thinking about these things and actually doing them. Yeah. And what I appreciate, appreciate about you is that you're always willing to look ahead and figure out how do we grow? How do we meet those uh, demands or challenges? And um, I mean, I can't imagine when you look back where you were 10 years ago, you know, and where we are now. Uh, what do you think about when you do that, when you play that, that thought back and fast forward to today? Um, I don't, I have a tendency not to look backwards too much. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I think that that's a grounding effect too. Um, I like to keep my feet on the ground. I, I like to look more forward. Um, mm-hmm. I, le- I like to keep my thoughts in, okay, you know, if we're successful today, how can we use that success also to help others? Like that, that's another whole, you know, aspect of this and, and looking through this time um, at, a, at a lens of, you know, we're, we're successful. Um, how do we use that set success to impact the lives of others? And, yeah. um, you know, we, we continue to do that. We continue to expand um, what we're doing within the communities. I mean, I, I, everything that, that happened really throughout this, I mean, one of the, the biggest things that I'm the most proud of with our company um, is, you know, within a two week period of time, um, we did a major fundraiser to help support the first responders and, and bring them lunches and bring them dinners to the firehouses, to the hospitals, you know, all, all over. And, and, you know, we have somebody, um, you know, doing masks, yeah. um, mask warriors, Sharon McTee. I mean, it's that type of thing that where you really are, are laying out a huge impact. Um, that's something tremendous that's come out of this. And, and that, I think, is one of the blessings of being a business owner, right, is that you can use your business to create opportunity, you can use your business to give back um, and, you know, create legacy, right? And the purpose of a business is to, you know, fund your version of that perfect life. So, so let's end on this last question about legacy, another one you weren't prepared for necessarily. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, what's that? We'll see how I do. We'll, oh, you're going to do beautifully. So what does legacy mean to you? You know, I think we, we create our legacy every day. And, and I think that, that legacy shows up in, in big things and in small things in life. And uh, I think, you know, our, our biggest legacy will always be our, our children, uh, you know, and, and, and what we lay out for them. Um, you know, I, I, and really just what, what we've done, you know, um, what we've done to impact others. Um, so I, I sort of stopped, um, my coach and I went through this a lot, um, over the past few years, uh, cause she's very big on legacy mm-hmm. and, and introducing me to the concept. And I think it, it stopped, that also stopped becoming a finite thing that, you know, is like you die and you leave a legacy. Right. It's like you're working every day and, and every day have you created a legacy. And so, yeah, so, so that's really my, my thinking now on, on legacy. And, uh, and I think it just shows up, it, like I said, it shows up first and foremost in, in our, our kids and our family. Um, and, and then it shows up in the, in the business and, and then it shows up in the lives of the others in the business that you have. That, that's it. And, you I know, think it, that's it. it yeah, I mean, it really, it really multiplies, 
you know, a lot. Um, and uh, so, and, and then it's what, in what they create for their families, you know, that becomes your legacy. Yeah. So, yeah. Beautiful. That was well said. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, it was great. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, we're going to end on that note because I think that, um, that that is something we all have to really look at and work towards is, you know, how are we impacting the lives of others? So, all right. Thank you. I'm going to log off. <laughs>